Hey everyone, it's been a while since we did the best STMR videos. As a matter of fact, the last one I did was in May 2021, so I think it's good to refresh this list. And last year I only picked my top three. And uh, a lot of people suggested, well, top three might not be enough, should have been top five. I agree. So this is why I extended this list to my top five picks. There have been a lot of items anyway and materia slots for that matter too. That would make this top three list very, very hard to pull off. So going for top five probably is the best way to account for all possibilities that we have. Okay, so before we start this, um, there are a few restrictions to this list. We are looking at permanent STMRs only, no time limited STMRs, meaning no Lara STMR, no Angela stuff, for example, no Trials of Mana in general, so no true double hand helmet from Trials of Mana, for example. So all of this stuff and no turfing for that matter too. So please keep that in mind and um, yeah, don't sweat it if you don't see these uh, items on this list. We are looking for general use. Killers are not a main focus and resistances are also not a main focus. Well, resistances really do matter in Clash of Wills and they play a huge, huge, huge part in actually being able to cap these fights. Accounting for resistances, well, the whole materia list at the end would be Clash dominated stuff. So, but, but I did account for Clash a little bit. Just, just a little bit. And yeah, obviously there's no trial equipment mentioned in here as well, because those items are generally very good, but they are not STMRs. Although some of them are STMR level, obviously. And also please keep an open mind about this list and this video that these are my personal top five picks. Your mileage may vary, but I guess in most cases we will find a common ground because these items are being used every single time and they are super, super good anyway. So there shouldn't be too much discussion, but it's for those people who want to get a nice overview of the best items available in the game. So let's start this off with best physically typed weapons. Now we are in a true double hand meta, so a uh, Clown Prince Noct, a uh, Crown Prince Noctis's weapon and the Dane's weapon, the Ultima Blade and the Ultima weapon, they aren't really used anymore. These days, all we do use is Masamune for Final Fantasy VII, that is Sephiroth's um, Katana, or Masamune from uh, Final Fantasy X, which is Oran's STMR. We also frequently use Black Sparky. We also frequently use Modified Shotgun, which is Lara's STMR. And ever since Tyvus came around, we are also using Swordbro of Unbreakable Faith again, um, especially in conjunction with the Global Exclusive Vision card, which also boosts um, the general usage of this weapon type. So it's a reason why I kept the Swordbro of Unbreakable Faith on this list. It also was on this list last year, so not too shabby for a, for a weapon that's been here for more than a year to be still that relevant. But I guess that what's, that's what happens when you actually make true double hand meta meta. So yeah, um, out of all of these weapons, I would say it's uh, between Black Sparky and Masamune Final Fantasy X, which are probably the best weapons from this list. But truth be told, if you have Lara's uh, STMR, the modified shotgun twice, you'll be very, very good to go. But things with the variants change coming up in a few weeks, hopefully, may change. All right, let's check out the best magic and SPR typed weapons. Now, at the top, some people will nitpick this, is Nirvana from Final Fantasy X. Yes, this is a TMR, but it's still the best SPR weapon you will find, with the exception of Shuyu's uh, STMR, but Shuyu is a time limited unit, so she doesn't make the cut for this video, obviously, like I mentioned. So just to put a spirit weapon on this list, I used Nirvana. I could have used uh, Lena's STMR, the seven star Lena that is, the Judgment Staff, with the spell on it. It would have been a good pick, 
but I think Nirvana just takes the cake here anyway because we're using Yuna these days for the dark field. Um, I, I thought, yeah, making this exception is okay in this case. So yeah, um, I mean, Yuna's TMR uh, is pretty great, especially for the Neo Vision Yuna, the Summoner Yuna, and generally pretty good. Um, the other thing is the Serpent Rod of Twin Sages, Dark Fina and Salt. Um, STMR with the 50% true double handed to dual wheel magic. Pretty strong. Now both Terra and Ferris are on this list yet again, one should say. Because both weapons got very very good upgrades from Chronicle Battles. So whenever you're using a, a an evoke damage dealer, uh, you are ending up using either weapon. Now at times, less likely so these days because most of the time we are using the Dark Visions Rod or we are using uh, Faisalus' gun, uh, both Faisalus, the Four Wind Faisalus and the Summer Sniper Faisalus gun. I purposefully didn't include those on the list um, because, well, they are guns and you have to use equipped gun most of the time on, say, Angela and the weapons here are more general use than needing this special equipment or material piece to be able to equip a gun. But rest assured, Summer Faisalus um, and um, for Wind Faisalus's gun, they are very good and they technically should get a place on this list. But since this is only top five, yeah, this is where we ended up. All right. Head slots. Um, not really much changed here. We only got very, very few good head pieces, uh, truth be told. So Red Hellebore from Carlet is still on this list as a scanning goggles, even though it is wildly power crap these days, but it's still good for the killers because it's for killer types, plant stone, insect machine. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the best additions we've gotten in the last year are actually Kresnik's STMR and Vivi's STMR with his head and Plague Doctor's mask because, well, those are very, very valuable STMRs. And um, I mean, truth be told, it's in the bottom right, as you can see, whenever you can, you are ending up using the Clash Helmet regardless because it is that good and it is best in slot on pretty much every single DPS unit, physical and magical, that can use it. Sadly, we don't have that really awesome Spirit Clash um, helmet or uh, hat yet. Hopefully we'll get this sometime down the line. That'd be great too. Next up, chest pieces. We've got a few new additions here. Mainly Sephiroth's long coat is one of the best, if not the best um, chest piece, if uh, you want to say so. Mainly for the 80 attack, it's bar none, basically outside the Clash Rook, which also is in the bottom right. So it's best in slot for most anyway. Sephiroth, for example, doesn't want to use the chain cap clothes from Clash because he has to wear his own STMR for the 500 static attack. So that is, uh, unless a unit has to wear the STMR of himself or herself, uh, Whimsical Winter Tiana is also one of those cases where she would technically want to use the chain cap clothes, but ends up using her own STMR for the static magic. Same vein, Sephiroth. But yeah, I mean, Sephiroth's long code, I have four copies of it, and I'm frequently using two or more if um, I'm using ending up not being short on killers anywhere. So whenever I do have that three slot, I slot in Sephiroth's long code just for the AD attack, because it's such a huge damage boost. Still on this list, um, Wizard of Shintoto's STMR rope. It's still great for the 50% LB damage, but we've gotten a few better ones and, um, well, not better ones, but more valuable ones. Um, the Starlight Dress, for example, Roka's STMR is one of those. While the magic is a little bit lower and has no uh, LB damage on it, it has 50% stone and fairy killer and a stop resistance and a stone fairy killer. It is a very, very nice addition. And I like it because you do have that more wiggle room in materia slots, um, especially on units that have a hard time capping killers. Anyway, this is a great addition that we've gotten over the last year. Same vein, Lord of the Seas Nicole's STMR, but 
Quite, truth be told, this is only really relevant for SPR-based mages or damage dealers because um, while it is pretty much a carbon copy of um, Rokas, it is worse uh, because spirit, made, uh, spirit DPS, they aren't that meta. And if they are, well, it's only Cetra Descendant Error for Holy Shenanigans. So yeah, I mean, and she wants uh, MP too, so... It's kind of iffy, I, I thought about it for a long time. Maybe sure you, when she gets her buffs next week, hopefully, uh, will use this. But we'll see. I mean, it's Beast Aquatic Killer, so that's good at all. Uh, anyway. But we'll have to see. And Eros Close, um, I thought long about this, but I should put this on the list still, because I personally haven't used this STMR in a fairly long time. But I still believe, because of its high, very high magic, Flat stat and a tr 50% true double hand magic, it should be on this list because, in terms of raw stats and what it does, it is still very, very good. All right, next up accessory slots. And um, let's start off with Yunus, um, Summoner Yunus STMR's um, accessory. The reason, I mean, it's obvious that, it, that this is on the list, but it's also the reason why I. Um, considered um, Sakura, uh, Rokas, sorry, Rokas STMR on the previous list is because we are using Yuna's necklace, which is 50% LB damage. So you don't need that Wizard of Shantodo rope anymore and can use killers instead whenever applicable, obviously. And uh, yeah, I mean, it is, the accessory slots has seen the most changes on this list, truth be told. And it's not surprising because three out of five of these units, they are premium, um, Tifa, Yuna, and Auron. And it really shows that these premium units, while I dislike Yuna being premium, because truth be told, the only thing that makes a premium is her vision card and the STMR. But as you can see, premium units do take the cake in terms of accessory slots too, next to their awesome vision cards. So yeah, Tifa's vis uh, vision card accessory slot Crescent Moon Charm is the best out of the uh, out of all of these. 82 attack, bar none. There is no better, but we'll have to see what the next clash item is going to be. I still believe it's going to be an accessory slot item, but we'll see on Monday, tomorrow, uh, in the news video. And yeah, 500 static attack, spirit defense, and HP for final. Fantasy 7 uh, Cloud and Tifa variants, it's crazy, 50 LB damage, it's really, really good. Same vein, Yuna's Necklace, um, lots of magic, attack, spirit, especially cool because Titus, a uh, star player Titus can use this too, which boosts his damage a lot. And then Orange Jug, not only good for himself, but also on Titus. So, um, truth be told, I think two of these are enough, because uh, once you exhaust your slots with Titus and Auron, you don't need more because nobody else profits off of it or benefits off of it. So you're better off using Tifa's STMR going forward after exhausting your two Aurons jug. So that's the reason why I only have two. It doesn't stack. That's the very important part here. Aurons jug, it doesn't stack. Um, so does not Yuna's necklace in terms of the static um, attack and spirit, but that's fine. Because you, uh, on Star Player Titus, for example, you end up using Orange Jack and Yuna's Necklace in conjunction with each other anyway. But for anyone else, um, you do want to use a Trash and Moon Charm regardless. And the cool fact is for Seth, no, not for Sephiroth, but for Cloud and Tifa, the uh, Crash and Moon Charm is stacked. So you do gain 1000 static attack, etc. etc. So that's kind of OP, but it is what it is. And obviously Sky's STMR, not only because I love Sky, but also because it's really good, is on this list. It doesn't hold up against the premium stuff, but still holds its own weight with 65 attack, which is very, very high. And 50% Dragon and Reaper Killer. The Reaper Killer actually is what got this item on this list because Reaper is still kind of rare-ish. So it's a good combination to have. And then I kept Heliolite from Saul. It's still very, very valuable and there aren't many that good STMRs. I could have put on um, the Floaty from uh, Beach Shinju, uh, Beach Boy Shinju, I think she's called. 
for another 17 magic um, flat and some LB fill, I believe. But I find the MP cost reduction a little bit more valuable, especially when it comes to Clash of Wills, where MP drain does happen more often. So yeah, that's the reason why it's why Sol is still on this list and absolutely deservedly so, in my opinion. And lastly, material slots. Um, we've gotten a few cool additions here. So next to Master of Fate, which is still one of the best STMRs in the game, we now also have the equivalent for Magic, Sea of Fate, uh, Sea of the Future, and for Spirit, a Shy Mermaid um, for 200% true double hand magic and spirit alike. So we do have the full trifecta. I mean, one could say we still need defense, but yeah, capping defense isn't that hard on uh, Maeve, and Maeve is the go-to defense uh, unit and spirit tank, so to speak. So, and we don't really have a defense-based um, attacker yet. So that's why it's fine for for the time being. Also, obviously on this list is uh, Ty vs. Spirit. It's a crazy, crazy good STMR to have, especially the global version, which got upgraded. Um, if you don't know, the JP version had only the 30x LB mod increase, and the global version added 300% attack to 50 LB damage for two turns. So all of this uh, lasts for two turns, and the 20 LB crystals upon usage. Crazy good. It's absolutely bonkers, and... Um, I still get a question a lot how many of these STMRs you want. Ideally, at minimum, you want three. Uh, in a best case scenario, you do want four to five. I personally have five, and I think that's good. Also, uh, Originator of the Final Summoning is still on this list. Um, whenever we are using an Evoker, this item is always slotted in because it's super efficient, 60 magic. A lot of Evo Mag, Evo Damage, Esper Bonus stats, it's it's just a full package and you should have it by now. Another one uh, that's been released last year after the um, video I made originally in May is Zedane's um, STMR. I wanted to go with you. This was also upgraded for Global to be wearable by everyone. So that's rather cool instead of only Bart. Bart? Yeah, I believe. That's the that's the ter terminology for this, but anyway, wearable by everyone takes five casts, five individual casts on turn six is the earliest you can use this. Three hundred percent LB damage increase and three hundred percent all stats. Well, the all stats isn't that necessary. Oh, important. The three hundred LB damage for one turn is what we love, and it's being constantly used in Clash of Worlds. Um, whenever there is a chance, whenever there there is usage for Sky. You somehow want to incorporate this STMR regardless, just to give Sky that a little bit more oomph. It faded out of the Dark Visions meta lately, um, but that's mostly due to the fact that Dark Vision bosses want to get killed by turn 4 or 5. Although two, two months ago, or was it three months ago? I believe it was three months ago, we still had kind of usage case for this regardless. Um, that was Vision World, by the way. And lastly, just to account for um, Clash of Worlds a little bit, I included Lucas of Valentine recipe here for the 60% um, water, wind, light resistance. There are countless 60% resistance materials in the game. Some of them are um, time limited, such as Mother's Return, I believe, which is also 60% resistances to a couple of elements. But this is more a an example of what you can do, and it's one of the items that probably sees most usage whenever we have any combination of the three um, dealt by the boss. And yeah, that is pretty much it for the updated list of best STMRs. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this, and um, I hope that this was helpful to you. So thank you all for watching. And we'll see each other tomorrow for a um, an Earth Team video for the Straw Patrol. See you then. Bye bye.